What up, gang? This is Ken Zerk, Ken Zilling, Gizzy Camilla, and the villain from the Trilogy. We are back on Umi Neko When They Cry. The boat gave a big shudder. Seems like we've docked at the harbor. The boat driver came out and jumped to the pier with the mooring rope. A large man in a tuxedo was waiting there for us with a warm smile. I didn't recognize his face, but judging by his clothes, I guess he was a servant of the Ushiro Miya head household. I see him. Uh, go to Toshiro. Welcome home, my lady. You were so late in returning that I began to worry. Ah, uh, thanks for caring. This moron got scared. We had to slow down. It was seriously annoying. Shut up! Someday, when the shoe's on the other foot, you'll remember this. At this rate, word will spread to the whole family, and that'll be a big conversation piece during dinner. Even without this, everyone would be talking about me because of that six-year gap, but now I've given them an even juicier topic. Damn it, why does the Ushiro Mia have family have to live with this isolated island? In the meantime, the boat had finished its mooring. A small plank was lowered so that we could get down. One by one, our parents came up from inside the boat. You must be all quite tired from your long trip. Madam, please allow me to assist you. Thank you. It's been a while, Gota. How are you? I thank you for your concern. It's always my pleasure to serve. Battler, isn't this your first time meeting Gota? If I'm not mistaken, you weren't working here six years ago, right? Hi. I don't like his face. He is not to be trusted. Indeed. So please, allow me to greet him for the first time. It is an honor to meet you, Battler. Uh, I'm pretty confident about my height, but you're huge. This is definitely our first meeting. I'd never forget meeting a big guy like you. It's my pleasure. I'm Battler. Your brand name. I was looking forward to meeting you. I am Goda, your servant, and I have been working for the Ushiro Miyahead family since the year before last. It is a pleasure to make your acquaintance. If there is anything- oh, fuck you. If there is anything you need, please feel free to rely on me at any time. Goda, it's been some time. It has been too long, George. Please, allow me to assist you. As usual, you're a proud welcoming guest. If you ever need a job, just let me know, okay? I hire you anytime. Stop, fuck you. Stop that. You do me too much honor. Please, allow me to assist you, Hideyoshi. Gota then lent a hand to everyone as they disembarked, greeting them as they passed. His speech and mannerisms had the refined polish of a professional. He was very graceful in contrast with his initially tough-looking appearance. His large size made him seem quite scary at first, but he was much more polite than my first impression that led me to believe. He claimed to have served on the island for two years, but he had doubtless worked at a similar job before. And everybody- every, everybody- bah! After everybody embarked, the mooring rope was untied and the boat began to steer away from the harbor. It was probably returning to its home port in Nijima. The captain waved his hand in farewell. Maria con 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 c t t uh, uh, fuck waved her hand back. Mm. Now that I think about it, that must be why I felt something was out of place for a while now. I can't hear the cries of the seagulls. Seagulls? The birds? If I remember correctly, whenever we came to this island in the past, the seagulls always greeted us with their night lively nya nya cry. <laughs> seagulls do not sound like that. Because of that, whenever I hear the cries of seagulls anywhere else, I get the feeling I'm coming to a family conference. Except for the small part of the island where those of the Ushiro Miya head family live, Rock and Jima has been left uncultivated which apparently makes it a paradise for wild birds. Supposedly, there was a cliff somewhere that housed a huge seagull colony, so this island was always full of seagulls. And not having those seagulls here to greet us made me feel a bit lonely. 
What's wrong, Badaly? Ah, Aunt Rosa. Nah, it's nothing really. I was just thinking, it's a bit lonely without the cries of the seagulls. My, that's true now that you mention it. Even though they're always so noisy, today there isn't one to be seen. Mm, why no seagulls? Mm, maybe it's because the seagulls are having a get-together somewhere too. Maria, did you want to see the seagulls? Wanted to see him. Still! It's a bit strange there isn't even one around. Maybe Jessica grilled them all and ate them. The hell? Don't say disturbing stuff like that. You'll get Maria believing it. <laughs> Jessica grilled them! Jessica grilled them! I did not, I did not! Why the hell would I do something like that? That's right, that's right, Jessica grilled them! Skin and meatballs, liver onion! Swim in meatballs! Liver and onion! As I made fun of Jessica, Maria tagged along looking like she was having fun. Oh, I never guessed she was such a good sport. Alrighty then. From today from today on, I'll make you my number one follower. She is pissed! Look at that face! She is not amused! As I smiled at her, she beamed looking overjoyed. Possibly because of the little connection we made with one another. That's not it, Maria. I hear wild birds are attuned to changes in the weather and atmospheric pressure. The weather will probably get worse tonight. The seagulls might have returned to their nests early. Not grilled? Jessica didn't grill him? No, no! I wouldn't do something like that! Battler, you admit right now that you lied. Battler. Maria is a naive girl, so she takes even jokes seriously. You should choose your jokes more carefully. It's not my fault she's stupid. Even though I outstripped Aniki in height, Aniki was Aniki. There's no choice but to obediently apologize. Yeah. My bad, my bad. Maria, that was a joke. The seagulls are all taking it easy in the nest today, that's all. Battler lied? George told the truth? Has she actually been tricked despite all the fun she was having? So she's just evil! She enjoyed the idea of the seagulls being grilled and, and onioned! Her pure eyes made me feel guilty. Maybe I went a little overboard with her after all. Yeah, that's right, that's right. What George said is true. The weather's bad, so they probably went home for the day. It doesn't mean they're gone. Right, Aunt Rosa? That's right. Tomorrow, when the weather gets better, I'm sure they'll come back and we can hear them cry. Meow, meow! Like they always do. I'll wait until the weather gets better and they come back. Gonna wait until tomorrow. Gonna wait until the weather's better. <laughs> Maria was in a lighter mood and was looking forward to tomorrow when the seagulls would come back and fill the skies. Still, George Aniki really was amazing at taking care of kids, even the stupid ones. I think I remember Aniki taking good care of me as well when I was a brat six years ago. That's probably your gift. George is amazing at taking care of young kids. I just thought that. If you wanted to, I bet you did good at a job in childcare, don't you think? Yeah, it's almost like George was born to do something like that. Personally, I think that suits you better than doing business in some company president's office. Oh, no, no. Child care is a fine career path. But it's not a job where merely liking children is enough.
George likes kids. You really are modest, George. But Battler is quite good with children, too. Just a second ago, even though it didn't last long, Maria seemed to be having a lot of fun. Please, keep on playing with her like you did just now. Just choose your jokes more carefully, okay? Aunt Rosa winked at me, giggling a little. She's a real mother, I thought to myself, who's ha was happy seeing Maria have fun. Maria! Maria! Come on, Rosa! And you brats, too. What the hell are you doing? Let's get going! Okay, okay, we're coming. The old bastard was waving for us to hurry up. Yeah, we needed to get moving. You might as well have this conversation after settling our luggage down in our rooms. When do the Umineko cry? Now then, everyone, allow me to lead you to the guest house where you will be spending the night. Please, this way. Go to call to everyone to let. I do not trust this nigga, bro. Look at him. He got the Peter. He got the Peter Griffin BBL chin. He got that goober smile like he's plotting something. He got them sharp ghetto Suguru eyes like he low key a psychopath. And his hair is too clean and neat. This nigga's a psycho. He do shit. He do crazy shit. Kumasawa brought up the rear. Chop, chop. The fuck? These CGs are taking their time. Alright, so... After taking the time of your life with the CGs... You decide to hurry shit up when I start drinking. All right. A serpentine twisting path led through a dim forest. I, it ran a bit uphill. I guess the path was made all twisted so the slope wouldn't seem too steep. But personally, I'd have been happy if they had the guts to make some stairs in a straight line. No doubt they made the path twist on purpose to put on airs of distance and importance. Before long, we saw garden style step stone steps. Ah, uh, from here on, I do have some memories. Go up these and... Top of the stone steps, we saw a beautiful guest house. Its facade was lovely, of course. But more importantly, we couldn't enter its doors without having our hearts stolen away by the splendor of the beautiful rose garden spreading before it. Ah, it's just as beautiful as ever as this year. A real delight for the eyes. After climbing the stone steps, the people greeted by this rose garden gave voice to their impressions one by one. Is it just me or are the flowers a little less lively this year? It's probably because it wasn't that hot this summer. I also believe that was a factor. Stop sucking dick. Have your own opinions. Sadly, this year's blooming is a tad inferior when compared to last year's. Hold on. Hold on. Even so, it was a beautiful rose garden. I remember that even six years ago, huge numbers of roses that greeted us every year. This rose garden was the first thing that greeted the people who came to Rock and Jima. Even our parents who came every year couldn't help but give voice to their admiration. In fact, it seemed to have gone a power up from the garden in my memories of six years ago. This place is always so amazing. It would be wonderful to have a rose garden like this at home. Give it up. Who do you think would take care of it? Roses are a real pain with bugs and diseases to worry about. Well, from what I heard, Kirie takes care of her rose every day and makes sure no bugs get anywhere near it, right? Is that an innuendo? Is that an innuendo? EW! EW! Front facing Rudolph is not good! What are you talking about? That's right. So in this person's case, the rose goes the rose goes after the insects like some nasty carnivorous plant. Oh, so that's what you mean. 
Come on, Rosa. Can't you give that a rest just for today? I've put that sort of thing completely behind me. I wonder. After all, you're a womanizer on an almost genetic level. No need to worry, Rosa. When a rose gives you too much trouble, it's always best to snip it at the root. Cut his dick off! Such frightening talk this is. Guys who are popular with the ladies are always forced to live dangerously. I sure hope I turn out a bit prettier in my next life. Hideyoshi, like I keep saying, it isn't like that at all. And Kyrie, stop it, you're freaking me out. You've made my rose wilt. Hey, Maria, look over here. These roses are especially magnificent. Magnificent roses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Smells pretty sweet. Look, this suits my elegance perfectly. What elegance, nigga? Hey, cut it out. Maria's gonna imitate you and get hurt by the thorns. She yelled at me as I leaned in to smell the roses scent with an exaggerated gesture. I thought she was overreacting, but then I turned around. I saw Maria imitating my every gesture. And George smiling broadly at us. Hey now, Maria, be careful. Rose thorns can hurt. George. Only this rose is strange. Strange? What's wrong? Maria pointed at a single rose. I immediately understood why she found it odd. In the midst of all these magnificent roses, this one single rose was just starting to wilt. There wasn't any particular reason. Some roses to flourish, some others wilt. That's all there was to it, but Maria seemed very concerned about the only unhealthy one in the group. Must have made her feel lonely. So you feel sad for this rose because it's the only one that isn't healthy? <laughs> Nigga, lock in! The fuck? What that got to do with us? You should have been stronger. <laughs> get, your, get, your, get your weight up, bro. Get your chips up, bro. Yeah, flourish, bro. Bloom, nigga. <laughs> Bitch ass flower. <laughs> the others are all healthy, but this one's sad. Well, they all bloom and wither their own paces. I'll bet this one's just starting to wilt early because it got to bloom before, before any of the others. Yeah, that's right. It probably just bloomed like crazy, fulfilled its duty, and went to sleep. You shouldn't get so worked up about it. It seemed that Maria's pure, sensitive nature was making her feel some emotional pain for the rose that wilted alone. Even though she understood the logic of it, it still felt lonely to her. Then Maria, why don't you look after this rose until we leave? George straightened up and felt around his pocket, and then took out the wrapper from the candy he had been sucking off on the plane. He twisted it into a thin string, then gently tied to the rose as a sort of marker. Hey, that's pretty cute! Let's mark it with this. Later on, he can come and give us some water. I'm sure Mr. Rose will be happy. Come to give it water! I think you should give Mr. Rose here a name. I'm sure that'll make it happy and you'll get to know it a little better. A name? A name. Ah! 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 Though she still wore her usual sullen face, Maria crossed her arms and began to consider this intently. At the very least, she appeared to have been completely pulled out of her slump. Nice going. George has always been really understanding. Can't help but respect him. Yeah, I guess he was just born that way. You gotta start picking up tips. Was this garden just like magnificent when you all were kids? It was only after I stopped living here that it grew so big. 
Before that, the garden was simpler, though I'm still attached to that one. He fiddled with it too much with that vaguely bad taste of his. I liked it much better before. Ava, you gotta think positive. Setting aside how it used to look, its beauty now is something to be admired. You'll be able to relax a lot better if you look at it that way. Oh, I didn't mean it like that. I was just saying that I wanted you to see the garden the way it was before, too. Everyone, if you please, I shall guide you to your rooms now. Yoda called to everyone and asked if we were ready, but our hearts had been completely stolen away by the rose garden that none of us had seen for a year, so we ignored the fuck out of him. Since we were in a travel group, it wasn't like we had a strict schedule to follow. Besides, as our parents were visiting their old home, full of nostalgia, it wasn't like they had to let themselves be urged on by anyone or anything. Understanding the situation, Gota continued to wait, smiling widely, until our parents got tired of the roses and told them to guide us to our rooms. Bro knows his place, that's a W. Well? Oh? Oi! Hey! Kanon if it isn't Kanon! It's been so long, how you doing? Uncle Hideyoshi suddenly shouted. Who is bro? Who is bro? He looked goofy. In the direction he was waving was a slender boy. Meeting him right after a huge man like Goda probably emphasized his small stature. Stature. The boy was in the middle of transporting piled up gardening tools and, and the like in a wheelbarrow. When he realized he was being called to stop, he sat down the wheelbarrow, took off his hat and bowed down. He got that Jacksepticeye on. He think he Leonardo da Vinci with the painter's cap. <sighs> Good afternoon. I figured he was probably younger than me. And I realized by the general atmosphere surrounding him that he was another servant. He greeted us in response to Uncle Hideyoshi's call, but he seemed like he might be pretty unsociable most of the time. He's secretly a crazy person. I know it. It was a greeting that lacked feeling. When Gota noticed that our entrance had shifted towards him, he went to the boy's side and introduced him to us. Battler, allow me to introduce you. This is one of the servants of the Ushiromiya head household. Kanon, greet our guests. I'm pleased to meet you. I am a servant. Kanon. Yeah, my first impression wasn't wrong. He seemed to be unsociable, or at least not so good at talking. Compared to Goda, who was extraordinarily polished as a servant, you couldn't help but feel an inexperienced, feel an inexperienced typical of his age. When Goda urged him in a whisper to give a bit more of an introduction, the boy named Kano only cast his eyes downward. Kano, Kano, could you perhaps give them a little more of a greeting? No, because we are furniture. He didn't seem to be refusing to greet us out of spite. Rather, he seemed to have fallen silent because he didn't know what else to say and to us in greeting. Uh, uh, well, Kanon shy. He doesn't seem to talk much. He might not be that sociable, but deep down he's a really good person. Don't get him wrong. You've been working here for three years, haven't you? Pretty sure you started the year before Goda, right? Even though it wasn't exactly giving a terrible first impression, Jessica hurriedly backed him up. I see he, I see. Apparently his unsociable nature causes him trouble a lot. Okay then, nice to meet you. I'm Battler. I'm 18, how old are you? I'm 30, nigga. <laughs> he fell silent as though wondering whether or not it was a question he'd have to answer. But here again, Jessica plowed ahead. Uh, if I remember correctly, he's two years younger than us, so 16. Yes, that's correct. It looked like he would have preferred not to tell us his age if given the choice. That was probably because he thought we'd look down on him for it. I remember that when I was around his age. I hated being asked how old I was by adults. I see, 16, huh? It's got to be a delicate time. Which means I probably asked something I shouldn't have. 
I'm glad you're about our age. Just be cool and call me Battler. I'll call you Kano. Thank you very much. But the sentiment alone is sufficient, Battler Sama. Jessica looked panicky for some reason. She seemed to think my impression of Kano was getting worse because of his refusal. Well, as a girl, Jessica probably couldn't understand the fretful male heart at his age. And his elder, even by two years, I took it upon myself to be understanding of that. Kano, could you maybe, could you perhaps be a little more courteous? A smiling face is also part of a servant's duty. My apologies. I shall make an effort. <laughs> That's his way of saying, shut up, nigga, I ain't doing shit. Goda. Kano's trying his best, isn't he? Looked like he was often warned about being unsociable. And apparently he hadn't improved one bit. Goda kept his business smile but let a small sigh of resignation escape. Well then I still have work to do. If you'll excuse me. Looked like Kano himself was uncomfortable with remaining silent here any longer. After a perfunctory bow, he turned around and Push started pushing the wheelbarrow. Just then the wheelbarrow suddenly wobbled and fell, scattering the load. I guess the wheelbarrow's single wheel got caught on the pebble and lost its balance. What do you think you're doing? Now, now, clean it up quickly. Go to urge from the hurry in a quiet voice as though hinting that it was shameful for a servant to appear clumsy in front of guests. Kano wordlessly reloaded the wheelbarrow with the fallen object, as if to say he understood quite well without being told. He seemed to be fine with the light looking gardening tools, but shovels and such he seemed like he was having trouble getting his arms around, lifting up some sacks of fertilizer. Are you okay? You're so careless. Here. But lady, you will dirty your garments. Please, leave this to us. With a smooth notion, Gota took the shovel that Jessica had picked up. Behind him, Kano was having trouble with the sacks of fertilizer. You'll dirty your garments? Don't worry, the ones I'm wearing aren't that expensive. Besides, I hate guys who just sit there and make the waitress pick up the fork they dropped at a restaurant. I lifted up the other bags that had fallen. Of course they weren't light, but for me it was a piece of cake. I'm strong as fuck. Kano looked at me surprised. It was the face of someone who never would have expected to receive help from a guest. Battler, don't worry about it. I'll, I'll take care of everything, so... Don't worry! I may not look it, but I've got to where it counts. Since Kano looked like he hadn't yet gone through his growth spurt, he was stuck with a sort of weak body. This kind of weight might have been too much for him. Yeah, it's quite heavy. It's natural that it would be difficult for you. Don't worry about it, Kanon. Alright, my time to shine. This makes up for the boat stuff from before, right? No! As if this can make up for freaking out like that. Later, I'll tell you about it too, Kanon. Battler was totally hilarious. Gonna fall, fall! <laughs> As they did this, I piled all the stuff back into the wheelbarrow. I beg your forgiveness for letting you witness such unsightliness. Come now, that's quite enough. Please go. Letting the guests who were supposed to feel welcome see such a disgraceful thing must have been hideously embarrassing for a servant. Pressed by Goda to hurry up and go, Kanon left. You're too harsh on him, Goda. Shouldn't you have helped him instead of being a bully? That was wrong of me. I deeply implore your forgiveness. Fake ass nigga, you are not a poly- that's, that's a fake ass apology. Without even a twitch in his smile, Goda apologized elegantly. He didn't mean that shit. Kano has a ton of things he's good at too. It's just that being young works against him all the time. It's a crying shame. 
Well, it's a prickly age. Let's just leave him be. After all, closed mouth servants are the best kind. Isn't that right, Kumasawa? <laughs> Rudolph, you truly are harsh. There's no servant as silent as me, of course. <laughs> Everyone smiled really at the obvious lie. I do not know how to say that word. Even she herself didn't believe that, not in her wildest dreams. So she must have decided to lighten the mood. Yes, that's the kind of character Kumasawa used to be. The one stiff atmosphere I cleared up at once thanks to her cheerful smile. I'd like to set down our luggage soon. Goda, what rooms are we all going to take? I shall be the same as the previous year. Allow me to guide you. Please, this way. We headed towards a trim, elegantly simple guest house. This is going to be our temporary quarters for the night. Puh! Kanon watched over our heads as the guests all entered the guest house. Then he let his eyes fall on those heavy sacks of fertilizer piled up on the wheelbarrow. In his mind, he kept going over the previous mistake. Battler, big and strong, had picked up the sacks in front of him. The sacks Kanon couldn't lift as if they were feathers. It would be extremely difficult for an outside observer to guess what emotions that favor had stirred up in Kanon. But as far as you could tell by watching him hang his head, there was, that was, there was something he just couldn't let go of. Muttered words escaped his lips. But those words he murmured were soft that they were so soft that they didn't reach even his own ears. Even I. <laughs> Kanon hung his head, slowly biting his lower lip. Even I what? Continue the sentence. Uh, they're taking their sweet time. I hate you! Let me drink! I'm killing myself. I remember the Rose Garden. But I don't remember this guest house at all. Was it built recently? Torian. Or Torayan. Torayan! Torayan! Visitors retreat. Was written on a gatepost like thing. But since everyone called it a guest house, I followed their lead. The brand new Western guest style guest house, which stood overlooking the roses, had a magnificent design, carefully done in harmony with the garden. Correct! It was built the year before last. Ever since then, they've had a sleep over here. This place is much more fun than that junky old mansion, you know. I wish my room was over here. I want a room here too! I want one! I guess you could say my own house was upper class, but to me it felt completely ordinary compared to the head family. The display of wealth was shocking, and as was the fact that they built this kind of awesome guest house for guests who came over only a few times a year. Please, do make use of this room. Please, take this room here. You don't tell me what to do. I'm taking that room. I really do love how beautiful and elegant this place is. Western style architecture truly is, man, is wonderful. I can handle Western design for a few days, but any longer than that, you need to, you need to, you need the good old Japanese look. Japanese people just relax, just relax. Wow, 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 wow. Japanese people just relax best on tatami mats. <laughs> They've been fighting over whether to make our new house Japanese or Western. Mom still holds a grudge about Dad having the construction started with a Japanese layout. They bicker about it all the time. I'm really jealous. Your parents get along well, don't they? Mine are so frosty. Then again, they're always in sync when it comes to my grades. All the rooms seem to be for two people. I was grateful since I wasn't going to be forced to share a room with that old bastard under the pretext that we were family. In any way, I figured those two wouldn't be able to enjoy themselves with someone like me around. <laughs> What's that creepy smile? You're thinking about something dirty, aren't you? 
Something dirty, of course not. Please enjoy your stay. That hurts you old bastard! Once again, Dad pulled my ears from behind. Cut the crap. I'm getting a stomach ache and I'm not in the mood for this. You're the guest of honor this time around. So play, so play as nice as possible with Dad and Anaki and the rest. At the very least, be careful of what you say in front of Dad, got it? Because wise cracks don't go too well with him. Jessica, what's the head's mood been like lately? Same as last year, I guess. Considering they say he's got three months left to live, he's as lively, grumpy, and irritable as ever. Uh, meaning this year, she's in his usual bad mood. And as usual, the only one who can look after him is Genji. It seems the master will open his heart to no one else. Lately, a small people have not even been granted an audience with him. He shut himself up his study again, probably doing nothing but that weird black magic of his. What he does for a hobby in his own, is his own damn business. When he starts stinking up the house, it really gets on my nerves. I wish he'd never come out of his study again. You shouldn't talk like that about the elderly. We're all indebted to him since he rebuilt the Ushiromiya family. We should be more grateful. Well, sorry. After being rebuked by George, Jessica had no choice but to take back her thoughtless remark. <laughs> nice, a lamp. It's not a lamp. It's just a light fixture. You, I can't even be sarcastic and stupid without sounding stupid. The Ushiromiya family was well to be on relief, but of course, that meant all his members were a bit strange and out of the touch with the world at large. And at the top of the chain, the family head, our grandfather, seemed especially strange and terrifying, even for our family. Dad said he was getting a stomach ache earlier, and I imagine that reflected the honest feelings of all the adults here today. No doubt they were jealous of us grandchildren who could play around and laugh without a care. From the stories Dad told me, the family head was a violent man who ruled with his fists, beating his children, even his daughters, mercilessly with a wooden sword. Fucking W. Gotta love it. If he was so strict and uptight about that, why couldn't he have been more conservative when it's with his kids' names? Because of that, even us grandkids have to suffer. A nigga named Battler. Anyways, I can't say I have any trouble believing those terrifying stories about him. I don't remember meeting him very often, but I think I recall him looking extremely grumpy all the time. Always making people cower with those sharp gazes of his. I remember that the room's atmosphere got so tense whenever he was around you couldn't even breathe. What my dad said about me being a guest of honor now carries more of an oomph for me. <sighs> Six years ago I was in elementary school, but now I'm a high schooler. If I act up, things could get serious. <laughs> Ooh, scary. He does look frightening, but he's not so terrified that you need to tense up like that. Nothing of what he says is truly unreasonable. He may be clumsy at talking, but he's a very logical person. But George, you've been the family darling since like forever because of your awesome grades, right? Grandfather treats us completely different. I've even gotten slapped with a wooden sword. On oh, my ass! My ass! On my maidenly innocent ass! Well, you're the heiress of the head family, Jessica. Grandfather's giving you special attention. You've got to realize that his strictness reflects his high hopes for you. Oh, come on. Seriously, I could just turn the succession over to you. It's a bit of a heavy burden for me to carry. I think I already said it before, but Jessica's the girl heir to the head family. We're only cousins and branch family, so she probably feels a totally different sort of pressure than we do. <laughs> Jessica, is it that heavy? If I help hold it, will it get lighter? Oh, that's sweet! 
It's okay. I'm not gonna push it on you, Maria. I'm gonna bear this cross until my grave. Don't worry. She was careful for Maria's innocent charm, but Jessica's face still seemed to contain some of the uneasiness she felt towards the future. Maybe we were in the same boat. Any high schooler with exams approached her without trouble hiding their anxiety for the future. Maria, come here. You and I will be in this room. Battle, I heard you're going to be with me in this room here. Ooh, shit. Now that's a surprise! It's bigger than our parents' rooms, dang! Well, I figured we cousins would all want to hang out together. So I told them to get a bigger room ready. I like it here more too. I'd rather be in here than with mama. Dang. El mom. Oh, you like it here better? You had like it better here too, Maria. All right. This room is George's and mine. But we'll give you special permission to come in. Better keep it a secret from your mom, okay? It's a secret! Aunt Rosa was right behind us, but Maria still answered, striking the, striking the air with her fist clenched tight. Secrets out. After setting down, our, after setting down their luggage in their rooms, our parents had gathered again in the corridor. Hey, what are you brats planning to do? Are you cousins just gonna stay here and chat? It seemed they were heading towards the mansion to announce their arrival. Normally, they would make us follow them and greet everyone together. But if that had been the case, Dad would have just told us to come and not be the end of it. He's saying it's okay if we don't come, so what do we do? Well, it's going to be lunchtime before long anyway. Better let the kids unwind here. Besides, the worst comes the worst. This might be their last chance to play outdoors. I'll go too! Maria, you house sit for mama, okay? Behave yourself and wait here. Shut up! <gasps> Since Maria was being told to house sit here, we certainly couldn't leave her on her own. George noticed this immediately and gave a clear reply for all the cousins. Well then, we'll accept your offer and house sit. We've got lots of stories to tell each other after being away for a year. That sounds wonderful. And Battler has six years worth of stories to tell, doesn't he? Yeah? I'll take care of the house like a good boy. Make sure you scratch behind the ears. That would probably make me really horny. Like if I had a, a like a, a, a baddie, right? And she was scratching me behind my ears calling me a good boy. I'd probably like that a lot. Kumasawa, I'm gonna stay here too. We'll break rank and lead the rest of the adults. Perhaps that would be for the best. I reported to the madam. Then allow me to guide you all to the mansion. This way, please. The other George are one thing, but the other children are one thing, but George is getting to be an adult. Wouldn't it be better if he came with us? If we make him come, then poor George will be the only one out of the place. Interacting with his cousins is also important. Okay, see y'all later. The adults left one after another. They left in the same formation as our trip to the harbor, with Gota leading and Kumasawa taking up the rear. As we gathered in the room assigned to his cousins, George asked us to excuse him for a second. He rushed over to Kumasawa, who was following behind the disappearing adults and seemed to ask her something. He soon finished his business and came back. What's up? Uh, nothing. I just wanted to ask her something. Tell me too, tell me too! Hmm, what could George be asking Kumasawa and not me, I wonder? Uh, I don't have a clue. No, it's a misunderstanding. Not that I, not that I know what you're misunderstanding. He was getting pretty tongue-tied. It's almost as though he felt guilty about something, and Jessica knew exactly what he was worried about. At any rate, it's no fun if Jessica gets to know about it and not me. 
Hey, Maria. Looks like we're the only two out of the loop, right? Don't you want to know what they're talking about? We want to know too. We want to know too. I fooled around while ooing together with Maria. N no, I'm telling you, it's no big deal. Liar! I'm surprised you tell us a terrible lie. Confess! Maria, you take all his right side, I'll take all his left. I've got his right, bottom has got his left. Get his ass. Get his Wait a second. Get him. Get him. Wait, you two. Get him. Woo! Stop. The fuck was that? Maria and I played around chasing George as he tried to escape, rolling on the bed. I realized high schoolers aren't supposed to bounce around like kittens, but I miss this kind of fun. A warm, cozy kind of fun. George, what were you asking Kumasawa? Well, I've got a good guess. It's been a year since the last time he visited the head family. Who knows what service might have come and gone during that time. Either way, it looks like he'd like to go say hi. Say hi! I want to say hi too! What the hell? There's nothing to feel guilty about. I'm not buying it. Maria, don't be fooled. He's still hiding something. More torture! Stop! <laughs> They'll be a tickling a grown ass man. She's probably busy cleaning or getting lunch ready. Don't worry, she'll drop by to say hi sooner or later. I bet you'd rather been welcomed in by Shannon other than that nosy Gota. Shannon Sharp? Unk? Hold on! Shannon. Mm. Ah, I got it! Yeah, I remember a girl with that name. Is she still a servant? How's she doing? What is it? By the way, Natsuhi. How's your headache been lately? It seemed pretty serious before. I have been much better lately. Thank you for your concern. Alright, here. A present for you, Natsuhi. Thank you very much. I'm always receiving gifts from you. Is this black tea? It's herb tea with peppermint and lemon balm. It's a blend from a well-known store and it's supposed to be good for headaches. I thought it might help you too. Rosa was always a consensus woman. Probably because she was the youngest of four and much younger than the other three. She managed to grow up without gaining the venomous nature of her siblings. Her kind words got Natsuhi to soften her expression for just a moment, but it wasn't enough to melt her stony gaze, hardened, hardened as it was by long years of mental stress. Come to think of it, you're always complaining about those headaches. Put yourself together. Jessica has her exams this year, right? That's gonna be a turning point in her life. Would she really be able to rely on you as a mother if you're like that? Hold on. She's throwing bows. You're three years younger than me. You should get your act together. She is throwing bows, bruh. I apologize. I've had a tendency for headaches all my life. Even under normal circumstances, I've sometimes failed to choose her words carefully. But her comment aimed at Natsuhi contained shards of obvious malice, though she hid it with a smile. Of course, that fact didn't escape Natsuhi. She frantically contained her urge to grimace and pretended to ignore her. A battler will have his exams this year, too. 
Rudolph, shouldn't you be a little concerned as well? For the sake of your own son, you'd better get serious to the point of having headaches like Natsuhi. If I say anything, he automatically rebels. So what should I say? Should I say the obvious opposite? That it's okay for him to mess around? That's probably the only way I could get him to listen to me. Hideyoshi, George did really well in his exams, right? Please, you gotta teach me the trick to handling children. Hmm, well, it's probably because I got him to understand why he should study. Study isn't worth anything on its own. That's right. The real point of studying is to practice research and stuff on your own whenever you bump into something you don't know. If you can't do that, you can't be useful to society. I'm not talking about math or writing. You gotta learn how to learn. That's splendid. I wish our Jessica would understand that as well. If she is to be the heiress of the Ashiramiya family, then at this rate... Do you think you have to force her into becoming the successor? After all, a woman has to find a woman's happiness. Parents shouldn't force such things on their children, don't you think? Hold your horses, Ava. Each family has their own way of raising their kids. You shouldn't be pushy. I'm sorry. Natsuhi, don't take that the wrong way. Though the light shining in the fuck, though the light shining in through the window was quite warm despite the cloudy weather, there was a dark mood about the room, which was probably causing headaches for more than just Natsuhi. As if to sweep away that mood, Kirie rightly made the suggestion all present. Still, this black tea has a really lovely aroma. Let's drink it right away. In Japan, surely you couldn't find something that something like Leopold's black tea anywhere but Ginza, right? I see you know a lot about it, Kirie. I guess it was worth going to the trouble of buying it. Kirie and Rosa stood up from their seats and made as if to prepare the black tea, but not till he forestalled them. I thank you both, but we can try that later. One of our people will soon be coming to bring tea, so please relax. Leave it for later, you two. Let's enjoy our welcome drink. Rudolph gave a subtle signal with his eyes for them to sit down. Kitty and Rosa understood instantly and obediently returned to their seats. A light fixture. The initial greeting of the guests was complete, so it was time for them to be served some tea. It was embarrassing for the host that the tea was late, especially now that the guests were talking about making tea themselves. Not till he bit her lower lip, frustrated by the ineptitude of the servants who were late bringing the tea. Seeing her face, Ava immediately started to giggle. Of course, Shannon had no way of knowing what was going to take place in the parlor. She came pushing a serving cart piled with teacups. For no apparent reason, Natsuhi gave her a pained look, and Shannon could have helped but flinch without knowing what she had done wrong. Goodness! Excuse me. Your tea is ready. Oh, Shannon! It's been a while! You keep getting prettier every time I see you. Oh, um, thanks. Save the chatting for after you set the table. The tea will get cold. I apologize, madam. She apologized like a frightened animal, bumped against a serving cart and made a jarring racket as she dropped several teaspoons. Her clumsiness made Natsuhi expression turn even darker, which made Shannon quail even more. Come on, Natsuhi. There's nothing wrong with her exchanging a few words and greeting. The tea must be plenty cold already considering how long we've been kept waiting. There's no need to worry. It's not cold yet. Shannon, finish setting the table quickly. I'm sorry, madam. Nazi's irritation was obvious by now. The ineptitude that delayed the tea, the clumsiness of the servant. Everything pointed to the incompetence of Natsuhi's everyday leadership making her lose face. 
as the person in charge of the Ushu or Mia head, fat head family's kitchen, allowing that clumsiness to be exposed the day of all days was surely nothing to less than total humiliation. Lock, it. Lock in! Lock in, Natsuhi! Lay off, Natsuhi. Don't you think it's a little harsh to bully Shannon when she's trying her best? I'm not bullying anyone. What a nice aroma. May I ask what brand this is? Um, I... I'm terribly sorry. I'll find out for you later. Kiria was trying to be nice, hoping to cut through the tense mood. However, Shannon had embarrassed herself instead, darkening Natsuhi's face in the room in the room's mood. By this point, Eva was audibly giggling. What's this? Shannon, don't you even know what you're pouring us? Come now, you mustn't serve something so suspicious to guests. We'll need a silver spoon at the very least before we can drink this. I... I'm sorry. I'll go get one immediately. Shannon, do you know what silver spoons are used for? They have to be silver. Do you know why? No? Um, a teasing smile rose to Eva's face as she saw it as she stared at Shannon setting the table. By itself, Eva's expression was sweet in an impish sort of way. However, the words being spun from her lips held the keenness of a razor within them. Shannon tried with all her might to avoid Eva's continuous gaze. Realizing that Shannon was hard-pressed for an answer, Rosa gave some timely help. They say if silver is touched by poison, it darkens. Guess you've learned something today, Shannon. They were, all, they were acting as if this tea needed to be tested for poison before it could be drunk. In Natsuhi's eyes, it was both an insult to tea and to herself for serving it. Rudolph laughed flippantly and patted Eva's shoulder. <laughs> Silver cutlery would do any Silver cutlery wouldn't do any good for you, Aniki. Just one lick from your poisonous tongue, and even a silver plate would turn pitch black. Since I get to hear that poison tongue every day, I must be poison proof myself by now. Eva, I don't mind when you use it on me, but you better hold back when talking to people who haven't built up a resistance. <laughs> My, how cruel. All I did was teach Shannon a bit about poison, about tea, didn't I? <laughs> Everyone followed the lead set by Hideyoshi's hoarse laugh and chuckled, though not easily. Only Natsu he didn't join in. But for the time being, the conversation inside the parlor could be respected for a lively and friendly chat. As Shannon finally finished setting the ta tea table and tried to leave, Kiria apologized to her in a low voice for not being able to help. Shannon gave a light bow and made a hasty retreat. Shannon cast her eyes downward as she pushed her cart down the corridor. Anyone seeing the pitiful way she looked might easily conclude that she'd been bullied in some way. Don't be sad. You didn't do anything wrong. You were watching? That is my role. Madam and Ava can go to hell. But the worst coward is that guy. Cannon glared hatefully in the opposite direction of the parlor. The preparations for the tea had been delayed by some trifling problems in the kitchen. These problems were not Shannon's fault. In fact, they had been Goda's mistake. After all, there was no way a show-off like Goda would give up a flashy job like breaking in tea when the guests arrived. He had, he had ended up wasting time preparing the tea once again. So when he realized he wouldn't be able to score any points for this job, he pushed the task and set of the table on Shannon, who appeared to be passing by. He might call it a clever move on his part, but there's but there could be no one there'd be no one doubt that it was a cowardly one. It's okay, Kanan, thanks. I'm not bothered by it at all. Kanan's silence vividly expressed the distance between Shannon's words and how she actually felt.
Thank you. Even if you're the only one who understands, I feel a bit better. You keep your feelings too bottled up, Mei-san. You should be less hard on yourself for once. Yeah, thanks. Suddenly, they both felt someone's presence and whirled around. A middle-aged man stood there. It was Genji, the head servant. What are you doing here? Shannon? Hurry back to the kitchen. Yeah. If you excuse me. Shannon obeyed and promptly made made the... And, uh, Shannon humbly obeyed and promptly made to push the cart and leave. However, Kanon appealed to Genji in silence, bearing something in his eyes that he could not express in words. What is it? Did something happen? Shannon didn't do anything wrong. But even so, they... Stop it, Kanon. Please excuse me. I'll return to work immediately. Kanon, you should go back to your post too. Please. If you say so, Nesan. If that is all, then I'll go. If that is all, then go. Yeah. If you'll excuse me. In the shadows in the hallway, an old woman wearing an apron watched over them. It was Kumasawa. Poor Shannon Kanon. There's no reason for those two to be picked on. Still, Dota's dislike for them is an undeniable fact. Until Dota was taken in by the Ushiro Miyahead family, I heard he worked for a fabulous hotel somewhere. The manner of work he learned there was quite impressive, I believe. It's just that Goda is the newest servant here. He must have had a lot of pride accumulated from his previous positions. Because Shannon and Kanon are his seniors here at this mansion and are yet and yet are inexperienced and have to go through much less in life than he has. He picks on them at every chance he gets. And also, sad as it may be, they are disliked by Madame Nasuhi too. Of course, if we're talking about experience, the madam has been in the family much longer. And yet, this is one point where I cannot help but sympathize with the madam as well. Truly, the master is a man with many sins on his conscience. Why didn't he realize that this is such... Why didn't he realize that such a trifling whim of his would give the madam such an inferiority complex? Of course, on the surface, even with the madam, even the madam is fully aware that those two don't deserve to be treated so harshly. However, the heart has reasons that reasons knows not. I feel so sorry for them. I can't do anything but watch over them from the shadows. Ouch. What is that? No, what is that? Stop. I don't like that. That's the end of the episode, guys. If y'all enjoy, like, subscribe, leave a comment, and tap into the next episode. Umi Neko, when the seagulls cry. I'm gonna be real, man. I'm rocking with this game. This is fun. I, don't, I haven't played a lot of games that are just purely reading, but you know, a lot of, apparently this is one of the best ones. So I'm excited to get into it. Peace out, I love you.